So, ladies and gentlemen, so welcome to our webinar organized by the Journal of Complex Engineering Systems. So, first of all, I would like to thank our publisher, the OAE publisher, so to support our journal and also the webinar. So regarding to the Journal of Complex Engineering Systems, so this is a journal, it's a goal of open access. So it was launched in 2021, and you can see some information about the journal on this page. So we have some aims, so through this journal to have uh, some high quality publishing and also in the, in the reasonable time. So the journal is already so basic index some databases you can see on this web page. So thanks to our editorial board and also some subject editors to support our journal very well. So on this page you can see some pictures of our our board members and you can recognize that we have tried to, to have it in the, the, in the large span of the geographic. So from different continents. So we have the board the members in the, our journal. And thanks to the support of these members, so the journal basically is developing quite well So the, since 2021. So if you look at the, what are the scope of the journal. So on this page, you can see you the keyword. So basically it can represent the scope of the journal. But of course, the more complexity in engineering system, including some keywords. So you can see on this page, all they can basically be related to the journal. So as I mentioned before, so since September 2021, so it was the first issue of the journal was published. And then each quarter, we are launching a new issue. So basically December 2021, and also coming to the this year, so March, you can see the issue published in March and also the June, and also the issue number three in September, and uh, also the, the totally we have a 26 uh, publication and uh, we are expecting to publish the, the issue number four for the volume number two. So by end of December. So thanks to all the authors, they have contributed uh, to the journal with the high quality of their papers. So here we can see if there's some samples of the authors. So they have highly contributed to our journal. For example, the Kelly Cohen. So basically he uh, proposed the two topics you can see on this page. So more or less about the, the explainable, the fuzzy. So to some application that UAV and also some other complex system. And also the urine view. So the, he proposed that the topic of about the sample base so by, by tracking consensus of nonlinear multi agent. And also the professor, the Jose Rago. So he also the, the contributed a very quality paper. So you can see the topic is about the measurement and the parameter system with correlated additive and the multiplicative uncertainties. So we have also some other publications. So they have highly downloaded or also cited. So in other databases, you can see some of the, the our sample publications so published in the last uh, two years. So in the Journal of CS. So today, so we are, uh, I'm pleased to, to house the, the webinar number four, so basically organized by the Journal of Complex Engineering Systems. So because of the, the hot topic of the, the green technology, so we have chosen the topic of the wind turbine systems. And for this special topic, so we have invited two distinguished speakers. So the first is a Dr. Masich, so Karczewski, so from the wind, the, the company in the Luch in Poland, and also the Dr. Alessandro Pantanella. So he's also our editor board members, and he's from the Department of Mechanical Engineering Polytechnic of Milano, Italy. So 
for these two speakers, so basically, so because they have done it, the large span of the research related to the wind turbine design and onset control. So we are covering the two different topics. So the first, we can start with the Dr. Alessandro Pantanella. So, and also the, the second, we can come back to the second speaker with the Dr. Kaczowski. So you can see the title of his presentation. So it's a very interesting topic from the post, uh, basically the academy and also from industrial point of view. So based on this time schedule and our tight uh, schedule, so we are expecting to have uh, some uh, Q&A. So after this uh, presentation of the second speaker, and please, if you have any question for the speaker one, speaker two, uh, so you can keep your question and we can come back to you with the Q&A, so after finishing the second speech. So based on this short introduction, so we can also, of course, uh, uh, I would like to invite you, so to consider our journal, and you can look at the web page of the journal, and then if uh, uh, some topics we have already announced as a special issue, and you are very welcome to submit your paper to the journal. And this is an open access journal, and also there is no publication fee. So, by uh, the, the for the few years, and the, you can pay, perhaps use this privilege to submit your own uh, the quality papers, and we would be happy to receive your submission. So, the, I can stop in this uh, slide, and also thanks to the to the journal office. So, basically, today also they organized the event today. So we can uh, get back to the first uh, speaker and uh, is uh, to introduce uh, Dr. Alessandro Pantanella. So the basic, uh, as I mentioned, that he's from Polytechnic from Milano and he awarded the PhD in 2021 in the thesis of the, the make floating wind turbine sea waves advances in floating wind turbine control and a scale model experiment. So the Dr. Pantanella, if you are ready, so we would be happy to, to listen to your presentation and the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, Amit. Yes, I'm ready and I can share my screen. Um, so use this one. And then, yeah. Can you see the slides? Okay, th thank you. Okay, so yeah, as you mentioned in the introduction, uh, I recently graduated and uh, the topic of my research is uh, floating wind and in particular wind tunnel experiments about floating wind turbine. So my presentation of today is titled Understanding the Aerodynamic Response of Floating, Turbine, of floating Turbines with Hybrid Wind Tunnel Experiments. Um, so uh, I guess that our audience is quite broad. So before uh, getting into the topic of this research, I would like to have a brief introduction about floating wind. So the origin of floating wind is offshore wind. And uh, here we have a picture of the very first uh, offshore wind farm. And that is uh, the Windeby farm in Denmark. Uh, that was built uh, about 30 years ago, so in 1991, but it was very successful, so it operated until 2017. And this farm was made of 11 turbines uh, with a total capacity of 5 megawatt. But the most striking um, number here, I think, is the water depth, because uh, in this area of the sea, it was just 5 meters. And uh, then we can pass to this chart that is taken from Wind Europe, uh, where we have the installed, oh, sorry, the installed capacity in megawatt uh, for different seas in Europe. And we see that uh, the 77% of offshore wind is in the North Sea. And this is because in the North Sea, we have this uh, peculiarity, so uh, very shallow water. And so it is easy to fix the turbine foundation to the bottom of the sea. Then I have this uh, other chart where we see um, the trend of the distance to shore and water depth of new installation of wind turbines. And we see that across the years, 
uh, wind turbines have been installed farther from shore and in deeper waters. And this is because the region um, I, of the North Sea is quite small. And so all the suitable area uh, have been used. So we are looking for new areas where to deploy wind turbines. Um, then another step, uh, there are, these are charts that are called technical potential charts, uh, where we have an estimate of the wind speed we have in uh, different regions. And here you have two examples, so always in Europe, Norway, and Italy. And the dot regions um, are uh, sea areas with water depth greater uh, than uh, one kilometer. So, so sorry, no, lower than one kilometer. Um, and the uh, uh, dash regions have water depth lower than 50 meters. So in the da uh, dot areas, um, we cannot deploy uh, wind turbines, uh, fixing them to the bottom of the sea because water is deeper than 50 meters. And so it's not convenient to have such a deep foundation. So it's not uh, cost effective. And so um, to exploit this uh, good wind potential, uh, we in the last 10 years, uh, the research community developed the concept of floating wind. Uh, where the wind turbine is installed on a floating foundation. So here we have a picture of the evolution. First, we had uh, onshore wind turbines with the wind turbine fixed to the land, uh, then bottom fixed offshore with shallow waters and the foundation to the bottom of the sea, and then floating wind with a floating platform that is moored, but uh, it is just floating. And floating wind turbines uh, are quite complex systems. <laughs> so <laughs> complex engineering system, let me say. Um, and here we have a picture that summarizes all the physics uh, that are involved in this system. So we have at the same time, um, the effect of aerodynamics of the rotor. Uh, modern wind turbines are the largest rotating machines on the earth. And so we have rotor diameters that are now up to 240 meters, so quite big. And this is still very up in the sky, like at 180 meters or something like that. And um, the wind turbine is mounted on a floating platform. So we have all the phenomena related to water, like waves, buoyancy. And then we have the mooring, so lines to attach the system to the uh, seabed and uh, currents and then the turbine uh, interacts with the atmosphere so atmospheric wind that changes a lot going from the soil level to the to up in the sky and also wind turbines produce uh, wakes and the wakes uh, set the inflow condition for turbines behind uh, and of course turbines are there own control system. So this system is quite complex and it is multi-physics. Today, the design of uh, floating wind turbines is carried out with numerical codes. So we have a simulation tool that have inside all the physics of the system. And these tools um, are used mainly for this task of to estimate and calculate the energy production um, for the development of new technologies, so new platform design, blade design, new controls. And finally, uh, this is a new topic that is quite trending for wind farm optimization. So to set the layout of the turbines inside the array. Um, for this system to be, uh, so, so for these codes to be effective, we need to validate them. So it means that we, um, have to be sure that they can predict the reality. And this is and one way to do that is to compare their out output with experiments at scale model. Big scale model experiments are good because um, they are done in control conditions. And so they are featured by low uncertainty and they can be used for this validation purpose. Um, but in order to validate codes, for floating wind, we have to simulate in the experiment. Um, 
some of these phenomena, so uh, not, not some, but all these phenomena together. So the platform hydrodynamics plus wave excitation, the, resp the structural response, the aerodynamics of the rotor and the wind environment, so the atmospheric wind, and the turbines control. The first um, experiments at modest scale we had were in facilities that are called wave basin, um, where we have water and the possibility to reproduce waves. And the floating wind turbine was, let me say, simply scaled. So we have a downsized model of the real thing with a small platform and a small wind turbine. And the idea was to simulate all these phenomena together with this experiment. But then we came across this issue. Um, so it was difficult to have the correct aerodynamic behavior at this small scale. Plus, um, the wave basin was devised to simulate waves and not wind. So the wind environment was not so good. Um, measurements in these models that uh, are in the middle of the water uh, were not a lot. And the same for the actuation capabilities that sometimes were not close to those of real turbines. Um, here we have an example of about the issue of the wind quality, um, where there is uh, a, a wave basin facility against our wind tunnel at Politecnico di Milano. So we see the the average uh, wind across the rotor in this facility changed from like 70% um, to 100%. Why here for us, we have variations in the order of plus minor minus 4% of the nominal value. So um, uh, okay, so, so the, the the wind tunnel facility looks better for some aspects like wind, but of course, uh, we don't have water. Um, then the, there is the other problem. So I said it was difficult to match the aerodynamic behavior of the full scale turbine. And this came down to scaling. So scale models are um, designed um, with similarity rules where some numbers are kept constant among the full scale system and the scale one, like the fruit number, that is the ratio between the velocity and the square root of the gravity acceleration and length and the Reynolds number um, that you may know. Um, and they have different meanings. So the fruit scale is important for uh, wave forces, while for example, the Reynolds number is important for aerodynamics. And we see that if we follow fruit scaling, that is typically used in wave basin to have the right wave forces. And uh, we have uh, a wind turbine that is between 50 and 100 times smaller than the real thing. We move along this red line and we have um, a reduction of the Reynolds number between 400 and 900. So, we cannot have the same Reynolds number of the full scale turbine, but uh, um, this uh, gets lower and it is uh, between 400 and 900 times lower. And this has a big impact on the response of the blade from an aerodynamic point of view. So here is the same. So I said the Reynolds is important for rotor, fruit for uh, waves. Uh, but we cannot have uh, the similarity of the two together at the same time. Um, so one idea to overcome this issue is to focus on just one portion of the system. So for example, the wind turbine and reproduce the rest. So the platform and waves in another way. The simplest way to do that is with I, what I call uh, hybrid experiments uncoupled. And so in this way to do uh, scale model experiments, we set the wind, the rotor settings, and the platform motion based on a priori knowledge. So for example, we decided to have a sinusoidal motion of the tower. 
of given amplitude and frequency. And we just move the turbine in this way and the amplitude and frequencies are selected based on some knowledge we have of the system. And then we have outputs, for example, the rotor forces and the wake that are measured in the experiment and are used for um, validation of the codes. So at Polymi, we did this kind of hybrid experiment as part of this uh, project uh, from the International Energy Agency, TAS30, that is called OC6. And in particular, we are here in the phase three. Um, so we move the turbine with imposed sinusoidal motion. You see it better here um, at our base. So it was moved in this case with surge uh, back and forth in the wind direction. And in this case with pitch, so the tilting of the turbine. And we measure rotor forces as well as, our, uh, as the way in the near region and the far awake region. And we provided these uh, measurements to the community that use them for the verification of codes. So here we, you have an example. Um, the dash lines are the thrust force or the normal force to rotor we measure. And then we have all the bars um, that are the prediction of several codes that uh, are developed by these institutions. And here is a case without motion, so the turbine is fixed. In this case is with uh, sinusoidal surge motion. And you have um, just an example, the comparison of all the participants to the, to the validation task. Um, the same here for the wake. Uh, so behind the turbine, the wind speed is not the same as in front of it because some energy is sucked by the turbine itself. And so um, here we have um, the same convention of the previous slide. The black line is what we measured. And then we have um, all the color lines that are uh, obtained with these codes um, or different persons, so different universities and based on different approaches. Then mm, there is another way to do coupled experiments that is uh, that try to be closer to reality. So in the real system, we have a coupling of the two subsystems, the rotor and the platform that is embedded in the physics of the system. So it is done in this way. Um, and then here we have okay, shown the controller of the turbine and uh, yeah, the wake. Uh, what we would like to do um, in the experiment is to reproduce this coupling in some way, uh, but without having all the system, so just the rotor. And then when we do the validation, um, we just take um, the rotor settings and the platform motion, for example, so in the previous case, this was imposed based on knowledge. Here, it is taken from the experiment and imposed to numerical tools. And then we do the validation, for example, on the way that is measured as, uh, as the rest of these quantities. And to do uh, that, we use this technology that is um, an hardware in the loop system. So here you have a picture more or less everything inside the system. Um, we have a turbine model. In this case, it is uh, a 1 to 100 copy of the uh, International Energy Agency 50 megawatt. That is on top of a parallel kinematic robot uh, that can move in six degrees of freedom. So this platform can have, have straight rotations and motion in three directions. And uh, this system in, is placed inside the atmospheric boundary layer of uh, the Polymi wind tunnel, where we can generate wind uh, that is close to what we have in the atmosphere. The wind turbine is designed um, as a rotor that is designed with airfoils that can uh, mimic 
the aerodynamic response of the real wind turbine. So we have correct scaling of aerodynamic forces and uh, good scaling of wind. But of course, there's no water. And in this case, we replace the water and the rest of the uh, floating wind turbine, so the platform and uh, the mooring, with uh, the hardware in the loop and a numerical model. So yes, that's the idea of how it works. We measure uh, the forces that are developed by the wind turbine in real time. And these forces are fed to a numerical model of the platform and mooring that is integrated uh, always in real time with simulation of other forces like hydrodynamic forces. And this model computes the response of the platform in terms of motions and the motions are imposed back to the turbine with the robot. And this is seen a little bit better here in this scheme, and that is uh, that explains the control of the wind turbine. Uh, so as I said, we have the numerical system with just the platform, mooring and tower, um, and the integration of the equations of motion of the platform give the motions that are imposed to the platform. Um, and then there is some dynamics associated to this robot. Uh, and finally, we have the real motion of the wind turbine. Then in this system, the wind turbine provides like a force feedback. And what we want to give back to the system is just the aerodynamics uh, so the aerodynamic forces of the rotor. But uh, inside the measurements, um, we, don't, we don't have just the aerodynamics because um, we, we take the force measurement with a load cell that is placed um, in the last iteration we had here at the connection between nacelle and tower. And um, this measurement also as inside mechanical loads, like load due to inertia and weight of the turbine. And we get rid of this by means of uh, this operation where we estimate the inertia and weight loads associated to the rotor. And then we, so the measurements are processed in real time in this way to have just the aerodynamic forces. There's an example. Uh, this is of how it works, this control system. And this example is without wind. So in, in this case, the aerodynamic force we have is uh, about zero. Uh, we just have the drag of blades in steel air, which is uh, very negligible. And all the force we measure is due to inertia because the turbine is uh, moving uh, with a sinusoidal motion back and forth. So we see, um, for example, with the case of source motion, the back and forth, um, we have the measure force uh, that is the um, gray line. And then we have the force we estimate in real time, and that is uh, the solid, uh, uh, sorry, the dashed dot line. So this one that is almost equal to the gray line and we subtract the two and we get the solid black. So the, this small uh, force and this small force ideally uh, would be zero, but um, we have it is like a residual um, and uh, is the drawback, let's say of this hardware in the loop. So, this is uh, like an unwanted dynamic of the system that is not present in reality. If the system is perfectly transparent, we have uh, this to zero. Um, so this is uh, the behavior uh, of this uh, hardware in the loop control. Then here I have some videos uh, of the system in operation. First, we have the turbine that starts up. So the wind is blowing in the wind tunnel. The turbine has its own control um, that regulates the rotor speed up to the desired value, let's say. 
Um, here there's another example of when the false feedback, so this one is activated in the hardware in the loop. And we see the turbine is spinning. Now the force feedback is activated and the force, the aerodynamic force of the rotor uh, pushes back the turbine. So the model computes um, the motion of the platform with this force and the turbine is moved back. The full test um, with waves that are simulated uh, always in real time and combined with the, the turbine forces. Um, some results, um, the first are free decay tests. So um, um, we apply a four step to the turbine. So for example, in this uh, test, the turbine is ideally pushed in the search direction. Uh, here um, you have data at full scale. So of course we don't, we don't push it off five meters, but this is uh, 100 times smaller in the experiment. So it is pushed in surge, and then it is left free to move. And we simulate this uh, motion um, that is, uh, and uh, all the color, uh, this is the same, but for another degree of freedom, that is the yo, is the rotation around the vertical axis. And then we have the response with different wind conditions that are the color lines. And we see the, the effect of the aerodynamic loads of the turbine uh, modify the dynamic response of the system, like the, the linear properties of damping and frequency of the platform modes. Um, this is, these are results for more complex tests with irregular waves. And we, here I have the transfer functions, so amplitude, phase, and uh, magnitude square coherence. Um, for the transfer function from wave to surge motion and wave uh, to pitch motion, that is the rotation um, in this direction. So the rotation that moves the rotor in the against wind. And um, we have the results for free uh, conditions. So blue is without wind, um, orange and yellow uh, is with wind. And we see the, again here, uh, so in this region uh, where wave forcing is uh, strong, let me say, so wave forces are stronger than aerodynamic clothes. The transfer functions are the same, but in the low frequency uh, where uh, wave forces are not so high, we see the effect of aerodynamic forces that change um, the response of the platform at its uh, natural frequencies. So I have conclusions. And uh, the first conclusion is, yes, floating wind energy is a thing. Uh, we are now in a pre-commercial phase, but uh, there's a lot of development and hopes for the future to have it deployed in the seas, at least in Europe, I know in the US, but also in China. And uh, of course, we still need experimental data to understand it and to develop modeling uh, for it. Uh, then yes, in scale model testing, we can reduce the uncertainty of uh, measurements and data by using hybrid methodologies instead of um, conventional uh, wave basin tests. And one option is the hybrid test with no coupling, with imposed motion. And the other option is uh, what we discuss um, right now. So the hardware in the loop uh, with real time coupling of the turbine and platform. And this um, is also potential for uh, turbine and far control for the verification of new system in turbine and far control. So that's it from my side and thank you everyone who attended the presentation. So thank you very much Alessandro for this uh, interesting and impressive presentation. So uh, maybe from audiences uh, could be some questions. So please, if you have questions, you can drop your question in the chat box or you can raise your hand. So otherwise uh, we can uh, 
back to the Q&A after finishing the second speech. Okay, so it means that at this moment, I don't see any questions from the audiences. So let's thank again. Yes? Sorry. Yeah, here's someone with his hand. Okay. So... I'll let him to answer. Okay, yes, Wait yes. So... Hello? Yeah, hello, yes. Do you Hi, have I'm... Friends? You can... I'm going to ask a question. You know, there is a platform under the turbine. How do you give the motion to that uh, moving platform, the robotic arm? Um, because... uh, so, sorry, I messed up with the... Uh, I'm trying to share again the screen. You know, yeah. you know, the platform or short platform, you are moving it, you know, like a wave. So how do you decide how it moves, you know? Uh, so with platform, I guess you mean the, yeah, what is this the uh, robot? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And you show, so... uh, you, yeah. You have shown us a video, the third video, the robotics arms are moving the turbine. Yes. Um, how do you so I guess motion? this is the video. Uh, the motion yeah. is computed in real time um, by the integration of a model of the platform itself. So we have the, um, the equations of motion of the system uh, that describes the motion that is given by waves and um, aerodynamic forcing. And then in uh, real time, as the experiment is running, we compute the motions and then the motions are the set points uh, for the robot and the robot moves uh, the turbine. Mm, okay. Okay, thank you very much for your answer. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so thank you, Alessandro, uh, for uh, answering the question. So I think uh, I don't see it. Uh, okay. Okay, there is uh, one uh, comment from the Dr. Union. So he says that very impressive work. I'm wondering whether the blades have to be redesigned in order to keep the thrust and torque in the same scale number. So this is his question. So. Yes, uh, so this is a good question. And uh, yes, the blades were redesigned uh, because uh, with the hybrid experiment, we have a improved renal number with respect to weight basin, but it is still lower uh, than in reality. So in reality, we have the gray airfoils uh, that are quite thick and are meant for Reynolds in the order of millions uh, because they are quite efficient, uh, these Reynolds. In the wind tunnel, uh, we have uh, Reynolds number in the order of uh, like 10K. And this, um, and we cannot use the gray airfoils because they will lead to separation. And so we use low Reynolds airfoils. Uh, in particular, we use the Silic Donovan 7032, that is the black one, because it's quite thin and um, it was good at low Reynolds. And with this airfoil, we redesigned the rotor. Okay, so. Okay, so Yuli said many thanks. Okay, thank you, Yuli, and also thanks, Alessandro. Yeah, for, yeah, thank you for the, the question. It was quite nice. Good, yes. and uh, well, thank you. I think it was very impressive work. So we can uh, switch to the second speaker is uh, Dr. Masich Barchowski. So he's going to address the, the topic of the retrofitting and extending operational life of multi-megawatt wind turbine through a smart devices and big data analysis. So a brief introduction about uh, the message uh, biography. So he participated in many the international R&D projects at top technical universities and companies. So he's the CEO of Wintech and a Polish uh, startup company offering innovative aerodynamic in improvements for wind turbine blades and the priority hardware for 5G IoT-based monitoring of wind assets. 
So he has a previous work experience in the USA, UK, Germany, and Poland. So his achievement includes a design and analysis of a reverse thrust a propeller for the world's the, the fastest the helicopter X power of three by helicopter. So the construction of the first Polish is a Polish a small a ducted wind turbine prototype and analysis of aerodynamic impact of the tall and narrow uh, car tires on automobile uh, drag. So of course, uh, he has published uh, many papers and also the books and the book chapters. Okay, so the, the message uh, to the floor is yours and uh, we are uh, pressing to listen to your interesting presentation. Thank you. Thank you. So now based on this, uh, uh, Q and A. So basically, we are uh, based on our uh, schedule. So let me uh, okay. So so basically, the time is uh, to reach uh, to close the session today. So I would like to thank again to so all the audiences and also the our two distinguished uh, speakers. So Alessandro and also Nashid. So for this uh, two different aspect of the wind uh, two one technology from the in academic and also from industrial aspect. So uh, basically, again, I would like to, to ask you because uh, to, to look at our journal, the complex engineering system, and uh, we would be happy to, to receive so your quality submissions. So it doesn't matter that either from the, from the basic the application point of view or theoretical aspects. So you would uh, basically the review our uh, web page and then you can get more information about the regular submission and also about the special issues. So based on the time frame, so I would like to thank all of you. Okay, thank you. So I think time is to close the session. Thanks again for all of you joining the, the, our webinar today. And we look forward to, to basically meet you again in the future. And I think uh, a copy of this uh, presentation today will be available on the webpage of the CES journal. Okay, then have a nice day or evening and then uh, take care and see you next time. Okay, goodbye.